everybody and welcome to the Air Scout Residential video tutorial. In this video I will walk you through conducting the Air Scout test. Testing can begin after placing the master and one or more client devices in the premises and deploying all virtual devices onto the floor plan in the Air Scout application as we did in the test setup video. Once you've completed this you can now press start test. After a few moments, the optimization phase concludes with recommendations for the optimal 2.4 and 5 GHz channels in AP location. At this point in the test, the user may pause the AirScout application and reconfigure the CPE, then continue testing or simply continue with the existing configuration. If within the timeout period a selection is not made, AirScout continues on to the next phase of testing. AirScout performs radio and Wi-Fi application validation. The results are displayed using multi-dimensional heat maps providing an intuitive, easy to understand method for visualizing results. Pressing the signal strength drop down allows the user to choose from various dimensions that can be displayed on the heat map. Tap the Device Class drop-down menu to select which 802.11 standard should be visualized. Click a client on the multi-dimensional heat map to display room performance metrics. To visualize AP information, press Channel AP Information. Radio dead zones and weak zones are displayed on the signal strength heat map. Dead zones occur when a Wi-Fi enabled device is outside the radio range of the master or CPE. Weak zones occur when the signal strength or the signal to noise ratio is low. These issues may be addressed by optimizing the CPE location, adding a second access point near the dead or weak zone, or adding a repeater between the working zone and the dead or weak zone. Congestion, defined by 802.11 as visible network traffic, is displayed on the Client Room Performance Metrics menu. Congestion may be addressed by selecting the correct 2.4 and 5 GHz CPE channel, selecting a 2.4 and 5 GHz CPE channel that is not in use by any other network, or selecting the channel with the minimal number of clients or lowest bandwidth utilization possible. Interference is caused by devices emitting in the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz 80211 radio spectrum and is a common problem. This includes devices like microwave ovens, cordless phones, Bluetooth devices, wireless video cameras, wireless game controllers, Zigbee devices, fluorescent lights, and more. Identifying possible common sources of interference and eliminating them from the premises if possible is the best method of minimizing interference. Selecting the correct 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz CPE channel is an effective solution for minimizing interference from other 802.11 compliant devices. Select a 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz CPE channel with a minimal number of adjacent channels.